I hope you enjoyed them snooker shots. It breaks it up a little bit, doesn't it? What I do when I when I turn over the battery, uh, I uh, usually slip a couple of snooker shots in. But getting back to uh, Callum, he's a fantastic fighter, but we've heard all this talk, haven't we, for five years now about. Callum Smith and how good he is, but yet the jury's still out. Now, will Callum always have to prove to people? I don't know. Has Callum Smith had gifts in his career? Now, the people that are listening to this, you all know your boxing because every Friday I read your comments. Every Friday morning I read them and I have a little chuckle because everybody likes to have a dig. But shout out to Jim McDonald. I hope you're alright, Jim. Uh, who else's names is the Seb? So, shout out to Zeb or Paul, how are you doing Paul, hope you're well, thank you for uh, for backing me in the comments section, uh, who else is there, on, uh, who's always out there, there's a, there's a few, I forgot all the names, but Jim McDonald stands out because obviously he's a fictional character isn't he, but then again a lot of you are all fictional aren't you, <laughs> but you all do know your boxing and you all know that Callum Smith were fighting, as I've just said, Luke Blackledge, right? He were fighting Luke Blackledge at Christmas 2016 in Manchester. And come on, Luke Blackledge. And then all of a sudden, he fights Eric Scogland, who was undefeated and never been a world champion. But when you're undefeated, it looks good. He had a padded record. Holtzkian, a kickboxer who took boxing up, 13 and 0 and he couldn't get them out of there but he got Groves out there which is strange Grove, Groves got greedy in my opinion in that fight but everybody knew he had miles on the clock and that Groves was what's the word how can I put it Groves was shot worn wasn't he I mean Callum Smith right He's had 122 rounds, he's fresh as a daisy. He is fresh as a daisy. Now, uh, Billy Joe Saunders, he's had 191 rounds. Now, Billy Joe Saunders has been a professional now since his first fight. He was a professional after the 2008 Olympics. Eddie Hearn, uh, Dennis Hobson tried to sign Billy and it was very close, it was between him and Frank but as Dennis was telling me and on Dennis's stag do we all went out for a curry after we had a beer and uh, we were all there, there were me, Terry Chapman, Dharma, Richard Towers, a few others and he, uh, Dennis said that he gave them all watchers, you know, on aeroplane, you know, all GB team 2008 on way to Beijing. Dennis were not playing with McDonnell, Jamie McDonnell, and they bought everybody tag watchers, obviously because he wanted to sign them all, didn't he? He didn't, he, didn't sign, he didn't sign any, which is a shame, isn't it, really, because he did try. But the good thing were, none of them signed with Dennis and Dennis were on the plane with Jamie McDonnell who was 8-2-1 and one at the time and I bet they were thinking why should we sign with Dennis Hobson he's got Jamie McDonnell here on the plane they're taking him to Olympics and he's a professional fighter Dennis took him because he wanted Jamie to see how you train as a pro you know as a proper athlete sorry get into a routine and Jamie McDonnell soaked it up like a sponge Dennis also sent Jamie with Steffi Bull paid for by Dennis to 5th Street Gym Miami so that Jamie could get more experience and Jamie McDonnell out of everybody on that aeroplane has won more world title fights than any of them how's about that than, than, than David Price than Dick Gale than Billy Joe Saunders Jamie McDonnell who were on that plane with Dennis Hobson while Dennis were handing out the uh, Tag Your Watchers, 
that he probably got duty free. So then he sport tag, 10 tag you were watching, Joe Murray, all of them on that plane, and Jamie McDonnell, the 8 and 2 and 1, the kid who they all thought were going to end up a journeyman, ended up winning British Commonwealth, European and a world title. And I'm going to tell you now how many world title wins Jamie McDonnell got. I'm going to tell you now while we're on, while we're on the subject, because he's a great fighter, Jamie. About as loyal as a snake, but a great fighter. Jamie McDonnell. Right, I'll tell you how many world title fights. I'll put it this way, him and Dennis went 13-0. 13-0. Right, 13-0. Dennis was first fight with Jamie McDonnell. Lee Askins beat Jamie McDonnell and Chris Edwards. So Jamie's undefeated in nine fights. And uh, he's ended up with Dennis. Okay, he's gone to Dennis's. Teddy Peterson said, well, you have a look at him. And there was oh, another guy as well. There was somebody else who said, you need to have a look at this guy. He's very good. But Pete Bell. Pete Bell, Jim Screw at Lindon Prison, Pete Bell, that was it, Pete Bell, Terry Peterson, Terry Peterson's pal, Pete Bell said, Dennis, you need to have a look at this kid here, Jamie McDonnell, he's the real deal. Dennis said, well, he's been beat twice and he's had a draw with Di Davis. Chris Edwards beat him, didn't he, on a split, and Lee Askins beat him. But a case can be made for the draw, the split decision, and the points loss. A case can be made. Michael Alexander gave it to Haskins, didn't he? A case can be made for that for, for that to be a win for Jamie. The draw, a case can be made for that draw as well. A Doncaster Dome. A case can because when you're fighting, right? Over four rounds. A draw, I mean I would foster a Doncaster referee giving it a, a draw but it's easy to get a draw after four rounds isn't it so so technically Dennis looks at it and thought do you know what people are saying he won that fight he drew him but even if it's a drew it's only two rounds each it's not a long enough fight is it the split decision against Chris Edwards I had Jamie winning that by a round and I thought he got robbed against Askins I thought he got robbed against Askins. Let's see who the judges were in this one. Uh, Dave Paddis went against Jamie and Phil Edwards. But Marcus McDonnell went for Jamie. So Chris Edwards got his win. So Dennis went in a change. Of, so Jamie had a change of direction. And obviously, look, this is how many world titles Jamie won. Let's have a look. One, he won obviously. He won Julio Seca, Seja, at Doncaster Rovers football ground, and then obviously he got stripped in it by IBF because he did dirty on Dennis. So then he had two fights with Eddie Earn for no for no belt, and then he fought for the vacant bantamweight. So then he's gone one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Fucking hell, he's won. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's won seven world title fights and a no contest and a loss. Now, how many world title fights has Billy Joe Saunders won? Let's have a look how many title fights Billy's won. One. Two, three, four, five. Billy Joe Saunders has only won five world title fights. So Jamie McDonnell has won more world title fights. Let's have a look at James. De Let's have a look how many James De Gales won because I think they're only two world champions from 08 team, aren't they? De Gale and Saunders. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, 
one two three four James DeGale's won four world title fights so little Jamie McDonald's won sent from Doncaster who were on the aeroplane with Dennis Hobson and people thinking who's this here eight and two and one and he's going to be training meals for a month in Beijing he's not even an amateur he's a pro and he looks like he's, he's, he's sinking Dennis has fought on his feet and in his foot I'm going to get something done with this Jamie McDonald. I'm going to take him to Beijing I'm going to show him I'm going to show him how to train as an athlete I'm going to repair him I'm going to repair Jamie McDonald. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invest in my fighter. And then when we get back, we're going to go on a great run. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send Steffi Bull with Jamie McDonnell to Miami 5th Street. Ste Steffi will keep him in order. They'll not go out boozing. They'll train hard. And I'm going to pay for that. I'm going to invest in him. And I'm going to invest money in him. And he did. He had about £400,000 invested in Jamie McDonnell. Now when Jamie McDonald brought the bacon home at Donny Rover's football ground, Dennis lost a fortune on that night, plus all the other investments he had in him. He had the Mercedes car they were giving him, flowing all over, hotels, the job lot, Dennis picking up the tab, and then he wins a world title, and then he goes to Eddie Hearn. Gutting, isn't it? Gutting, and Dennis all never look at boxers in the same way he did Jamie McDonald. He always looks at him now as, what's the word, as he's always, uh, what does Dennis, how does Dennis look at what, he's always old back, he'll never, he'll never be, he'll never be like that, because he had Clinton Woods didn't he Dennis, area title, British Commonwealth European world title, and he stayed with him loyal, McDonald didn't did he? And he has to take that to the grave, doesn't he? He has to take that now to the grave. But, uh, like I said, uh, Jamie McDonald's got a better record than Saunders, hasn't he, really? But, you know, it's one of them things, isn't it? We keep hearing that Billy Joe Saunders is this technician and that he's a surgeon. He's a guy who's got skills to burn. His last three fights in two years will read a Sufi for a vacant title you know it's it, it's craziness 42 year old Adamo you know Charles Adamo I mean who's he? he was fighting Carl Froch in 2004 was it? you know Charles Adamo, 42 year old, who Carl Froch beat 15 years ago. And Kosaras, that's who he fights next, isn't it? Marcelo Esteban Kosaras. That's who Billy Joe Saunders has got. So, no, I've jumped off the Billy Joe Saunders elite level. I've jumped off that now. I'm back on world level for Billy Joe Saunders. Performances he's put in against these guys have been elite, but. They've not been against world level guys. So I'm off the Billy Joe Saunders elite level. I'm off that now. I'm off it. Same as I am with Tyson Fury. I'm off the fact that he's elite level because one win against Vladimir Klitschko, who's pushing 40 years of age, 68 fight. That one win over 12 rounds was a schooling. But he only ever had one more fight later. That was just for money. So. That don't make you an elite fighter. Yes, you've got skills, but and Billy's got skills, and they can both fight. But I'm off of the elite level, and it ain't because I'm, I'm pals with Peter Fury. No, it ain't that. No, it ain't that. It's, I'm looking at the facts. You is not world level. Peter says he is. I'm saying he isn't, and and that's my opinion, and he respects that. But he thinks you is world level. I don't think he is. Now, I thought he were world level that night against Parker, but he didn't get the decision. And I think since then, I don't think he's performed as good, apart from Sexton. But he's had bad luck, bad injury. He's had a bad injury against Pula. 
you know, he, he, he got cut against Bacoli in camp. I know I were there, but the, but getting, but getting, I'm not. We're not here to talk about you. We're talking. You, you, will come good. He's only 25 years of age. He's got plenty of time. There's no rush with Yui Fury. There's no rush. But let's judge Yui Fury in another two or three year. But getting back to Billy Joe Saunders. But if you want to judge Yui now, Yui's European level. That's my opinion. But if you want to get back to Billy Joe Saunders, and we're talking about levels because too many people are told they're great and that they're elite before they're not. Before they are, sorry. But we keep, like I've just said, we keep being told Billy Joe Saunders is a technician, he's a surgeon. Look, he picks his fights, doesn't he, like the rest of them. You know, that's it. Three more fights, three more paydays. You know, point I'm making here is this. Right, point I'm making is this. When you look at Billy Joe Saunders, right, since David Lemieux, right, he's going to have had three more paydays against guys that shouldn't even be near him. Before Lemieux, it were Willie Monroe and Artov Akabov, Akabov, whatever it's called, Akabov. Andy Lee, a great win, but he's a light middle. Akavov, God, he nearly beat you, Billy. Willie Monroe, come on. David Lemieux, he schooled him, but Adamo, Asufi and Kosaras, he's shocking. It's really, really, really poor. It's really poor. It's really, really, really poor, but it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. But it's really, really poor. Uh, you know, I think the judges in the Billy Joe Saunders fight against that Akavov, I mean, I, I think they were all frightened to really express themselves. I really do. I mean, Marcus McDonnell, he's, he's somebody that's, that's, that don't take any shit from anybody. He had it a draw. But yet Dave Paris had it by four rounds to Billy. How can Marcus McDonald and Dave Paris be four rounds apart? I don't know. I don't know. Phil Edwards and Marcus McDonald are two rounds apart. But uh, and Dave Paris and Marcus McDonald are two rounds. Of, Dave Paris and Phil Edwards are two rounds apart. But I don't know. I just think that Billy Joe Saunders, since David Lemieux two years ago, he'll have picked up Adamo money, Isufi money, Kosaras money. But I think he'll have lost something from his game in that two years. Do you know what he'll have lost? The drive. Because he's not a 160 fighter no more. He's a 168 fighter. Do you know what I mean? He's a 168 fighter. You know, we are 73 inch reach. It's it's not. You know, Callum Smith's got a longer reach than him, hasn't he? That's going to be an hard fight for Billy. You know, he's got a one inch reach and it it is five inch taller. It, it he's getting on for half an inch taller, half a foot taller and half a foot in the in the reach. That's an hard fight for Billy Joe Saunders, that Callum Smith. But it's a great fight. And it's a great fight that we all want. We all want to be involved and, and, and cheer on these great fights and be part of it as fans, don't we? I, I'm a boxing fan f first and foremost. Do you know what I mean? A, f a boxing fan first and foremost. I would have, I would have made first with Den, but well, I suppose you could say I worked for him, worked with him with boxing before we become mates. But I drove him mad to be involved, drove him mad, ask anybody, ask Chris Smedley, a good friend of mine and great trainer, ask him, ask Michelle in office, I drove him mad, but I want to see great fights, you know, when when our fighters lose, I, I, feel, I feel it inside me, it's like a morgue, I want to see great fights though, if you've seen a great fight and it's a fighter from your stable and even if he gets beat, there's still a great feeling of optimism, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? It's like what I feel now with Josh Whale uh, helping match him and working behind the scenes. I want, it, I want it to work and I'm on the ball, switched on the ball. I'm on Dennis's case constantly about what we're doing and 
who we got for Josh Whalen. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Josh has got two fights lined up, 29th of November at Sheffield and 21st of February at Barnsley. Even though some promoter around here tried to book all the dates to put Barnsley Metrodome, they tried to block us, didn't they? Tried to block us, didn't you, Steffi Bull? Steffi Bull tried to outmanoeuvre us. I mean, I, I, it's like pissing in an hurricane, isn't it? Steffi Bull trying to outmanoeuvre Dennis Hobson. <laughs> hey, oh my God, you couldn't make it up, could you? Steffi, yes please, Eddie. Bull. Now, but, but getting back to Billy Joe Saunders. I do apologise for getting sidetracked with some things in boxing, but I have a lot of things going through my head all day. Obviously, I'm a battling, I'm battling drug addiction and all sorts, aren't I? Do you know what I mean? And at the moment I'm winning with it and things are going really good. Roll on the next drug test, 22nd of October. So, if I get in any trouble, is there anybody out there who can piss in a bottle for me? Who haven't had anything? <laughs> I'm only joking. I can't get off with drug tests anyway now because the, the urine sample has to show subitex. So, so that's, that's how I can't get off with them. So and it's in your system three days, so and I have to take my tablet in front of people daily, so at the moment I am royally shafted. I can't even go out and have a cheeky one. So but getting back to Billy Joe Saunders, he's had three more paydays since Lemieux, hasn't he? Three more paydays since David Lemieux. And uh, and he's still not for anybody of any note. Billy Joe Saunders has beaten the following people. Lemieux, Andy Lee and Eubank, John Ryder. They're his top four wins. Uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? Johan Blover, 17 and 27 and 2. Oh my God. But what can you do? It's one of them things, isn't it? It's one of them things, it's, you know boxing right, boxing can be the most unforgiving sport in the world. For example, look at Christopher Eubank, right, he wants everything stacked in his favour and look at Ty and Boov. who's he got in his corner now, I don't watch Ty and Boov's videos but I've heard they're a bit close to knuckle but Ty and Boov, really, if he'd have had a bit more notice, would have beat Eubank because he had better skills than him but he had all odds stacked against him, didn't he? All odds weren't in his favour, were they? So I feel sorry for him as regards as regards that. But it is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? He knew the risks, but I just feel that if he'd have had a better camp, his career, he could have been driving around now in McLaren's, couldn't he? Living in a big gaff in Brighton, but he ain't, is he? But getting back to this, it's become a shambles, hasn't it? It's Billy Joe Saunders who he's fighting. You know, but what can you do? It's boxing, isn't it? Uh, Billy's not not been taking it serious last few years, and he's but he's given chance after chance after chance, isn't it? But how much longer is he going to wait before he goes in with Canelo? As I don't really want to see the Triple G fight now. I think that fight's a dog with fleas, isn't it? Saunders Golovkin. I think it's a dog with fleas. Canelo is it? Canelo is Billy Joe Saunders era, he can't let Canelo get old can he, because Canelo is the same age, Canelo is the same age as Billy Joe Saunders isn't he, similar age, his age group, they've got to fight at middleweight or super middle and get at it, or fight for the super middleweight belt and do it at a catch weight, do you know what I mean, but, you know, Triple G, it's it's a dog with fleas. Triple G is a great fighter, or was a great fighter, and but in a poor era. But as of now, I'm, it's a different. It's different now, isn't it? Now Golovkin's come to end. It's all opening up a bit, isn't it? But as of now, I am off the Billy Joe Saunders hype train, Billy. I hope you're listening, you're probably not, but somebody will probably point it out to you. Porky Ross from Doncaster is off the Billy Joe Saunders elite hype train. I am off it. 
I want to get back on it, but I've got to see more wins. I mean, if you want, if you want to take Eubanks IBO out of the equation, he's beat a, li a light middleweight in Andy Lee and David Lemieux. They're the world champions that Billy's beat. One was a former in Lemieux, and one was a current in Andy Lee. So that's stripped down to the bare knuckle. It's a bit like Tyson Fury, isn't it? When all said and done with all the hype around him, he still has one world title win. One against Vladimir, nearly 40 year old. And the other and the other champion that he beat, world champion, was a former cruiserweight champion stepping up to heavy in Steve Cunningham, who dropped Tyson. So that's a known as a life and death. That is it. So I am off the Tyson Fury. Billy Joe Sauna's official elite hype trains. The world level fighters, but they don't get into the elite bracket. I'm sorry. How, how, how can you be elite, elite bracket with CVs like that? Yeah, they destroy everybody else around them, the Euro level guys, but to be elite, you've got to start beating top guys, haven't you? You've got to beat at least one person with a ring belt. You know what I mean? Frotch beat Pascal. He ended up a ring, but with ring belt, didn't he? At 175, Linneal. Frotch beat him. Arthur Abram had 10 world title defences, didn't he? With one belt. Frotch beat him, he schooled him. So Frotch is elite. So for all you haters who don't say he is, just go and look at his CV. Andre Ward's an elite fighter. He beat less world champions than Carl Frotch. Same as Hagler and Hearns, Tommy. Oh, Hagler and Leonard, they only beat seven champions, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? And Billy Joe Saunders, his career has been disappointing. He's got so much talent, it's unbelievable. Uh, but like I said, I am now officially off the Billy Joe Saunders hype train. I just think he's doing what Fury did to Vladimir and letting and just letting Triple G get old. Canelo versus Billy Joe, or it's as it's as simple as that. Uh, that's what brings me to that. That to me is just it just makes it all feel a bit of a waste of time. It's a waste of time being fighting these guys here. This guy Billy Joe Saunders is fighting. People will do YouTube videos on it, won't they, and just say it's not for me and that, and they won't want to go over the top. Now, I'm not going to go over the top, but I'm just going to say I don't think it's a great fight for Billy Joe Saunders' career. I don't think it is at all. At all, honestly. I just don't think it is. Now, now, and both are very, very good, aren't they, though? Saunders and... Callum, they're both good. Nobody can say they're not good fighters, but the jury's out whether they're elite. Sauna's two weight wheel champion, but the guy you beat for the world title won a vacant belt. He shouldn't have even been in ring for that. It was Frank maneuvering him. Frank Warren delivered him a world title after Eddie Hearn decided to give his Billy's title to Andrade. I mean, Andrade's not an elite fighter, but Billy Joe Saunders looks to me like he don't want to fight Andrade. Now Eddie's got Andrade and he's got Callum Smith. Right? Andrade's a middleweight. Billy's a middleweight with a super middle belt. Is Billy swerving Andrade? I don't know, but he's got to fight one of them, hasn't he? He's got to fight Andrade or he's got to fight Callum Smith. Or Canelo. I don't want to see Triple G fight now. That fight, for me, that fight's been and gone. But, but well, like I said, we're being told that Callum and Billy are elite fighters. Well, people tell me Carl Frotch is not elite. And then, like I said, he's got more wins over world champs than anybody. I keep banging on about it, but it winds me up. So, more wins over any world champion at 168 Tommy. Are you listening Tommy the Guru? More world champions than anybody at 168 that he's beat. Uh, so Smith and Saunders with their three decent wins 
off say if you if you count if you count Yule Bank or if you don't count Yule Bank Saunders has just got two decent wins with their three decent wins is okay what is Frotcher's Ah, <laughs> oh, we're messing about now, aren't we? Messing about. I hope you like them snooker shot, shots there, but if they're elite, we're just three wins apiece. What's what's Carl Frotch then with his wins? What he's got? He's got to be elite then, hasn't he? I don't want to hear about people saying Frotch is not elite, poor kids, because he takes too many blows to head. To be elite, you've got to uh, not get hit. In Ed, well, Marciano used to take blows to Ed, didn't he? He was 49 and 0, and he's classed as elite. You just got to get the wins. Timothy Bradley, he used to grind wins out, didn't he? He's on the list for Hall of Fame. Frotch has been nominated for Hall of Fame. If he gets in, he's a first ballot. So we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. So, we're going to see, but like I said, it's. Uh, we need to sort out amongst us all as hardcore boxing fans and all them people who go on social media what the levels are, what is elite, what qualifies to be elite now um, so but like I said boxing's become a joke the word great and elite and world level are overused we're now in the social media era where my friend and neighbour David Allen was two fights away from a Joshua fight. Yeah, he's never won an area level belt. We are told Ben, who is 56 years of old in January, is as good as someone who's Euro level like Fielding or a Brass or John Ryder. Well, Ben should go spa John Ryder. The train at the same gym, Nigel Ben and John Ryder train at Matchroom Gym where Tony Sims. Uh, trains. Well, why don't Nigel spar John Ryder if Nigel wants to uh, wants closure? Closure in boxing means I want pay and I want money. Money means closure. You know. Or why don't you go spar KSI or Logan Paul? Two YouTubers. I mean that's pay per view, isn't it? On Sky Sports. Well, they've turned pro, haven't they? Go spar them, Nigel. You know what I mean? I mean, this is the crap we're being told and what we have to lap up. Too many boxers are trying to be politicians. Oh, I just want a bit of closure. Do you know what I mean? I'll match him all the way, all the way. Closure, all the way. Yeah, closure. Well, you got your closure, didn't you, against Steve Collins when you quit in ring. You know what I mean? You retired in ring three times. You've had your closure. You've had your day. If somebody gets hurt, what's going to happen then? It's all unfolding in front of us, isn't it? It's a bit like with Dave Allen, isn't it? If he gets hurt, who's to blame? We'll get back to David in a bit. I've got some, there's, there's some corker stuff to come in next few parts, because this is going to be that long, I'm going to break it up into, I'll get Nicola to break it up into certain parts, because it's no good putting out two or three hours, is it? The system is being manipulated by Eddie Hearn. He has people employed to run social media across every platform. I am told he employs a team of them because it's cheaper than advertising. And who can blame him? As he gets it, doesn't he, Eddie? He gets what it's all about. As when we have two white collar fighters being given pro licenses and are told and are told they 
can headline I am personally starting to ask myself, ask myself what am I involved in here? What do, what do I want to be a part of me? What do I want to be a part of me? This. Do I want to be a part of this? Best thing about boxing I like is when I'm in office with Den, Michelle, Meet Whale, Josh Whale, and we put things to Josh and Mick and we talk as a team and we say yeah and we say no or Dennis will say Russell why are you coming out with that you bonkers or and then everybody will laugh and then somebody will say no that's a good idea that and then Dennis will say yeah well I'll give you that one Russ banter in it but working as a team or when Den might phone Terry Chapman Dharma or Rico and ask them their opinions or you'll say Russ ask them ask them boys what they think you pick people's brains don't you you try and mould kids don't you the good thing about working with Mick Whale is Mick Whale he's open to ideas I knew that once when I was at a show with Mick and we were all ringside and he was sat with Steffi Bull and Josh and I said hey Mick what about this kid here for Josh and I'll never forget, and Steffi Bull jumped up and he said, he's already got a fight or some, uh, do keep up, Ross. And then I threw another name and he jumped up and he goes, oh, I can't listen to this, Steffi, and he stormed off. That was, the re that was the day, Steffi, and I know you're listening, Steffi, and Mick and Josh will remember this. That was the day, Steffi, when I decided to make me move for Josh Whale. That was the day. Your attitude towards me, Steffi, even though me and Dennis were working with you at the time, your attitude towards me was same as what you said the other week. What do I know about boxing? Go right on back of a stamp. Yeah. But the, the plan was, Steffi, for me to learn off you. But you couldn't give me any respect, could you? I was sat with you in company, Steffi, and I was saying, Hey, Mick, what about this for a fight for Josh? What do you reckon? I thought we were talking as a group, Steffi. That's what I thought. I thought we were talking as a group. Because you're his manager, so I'm not going to go above you. I'm just Dennis's tea boy, aren't I? I'm just messenger boy. It's like when I come down to your gym, Steffi, and, and you were all there with Curtis Woodhouse, and you all went, What do you want, Porky? And I said, Oh, Dennis has just sent me around to see if you need anything for the show. And you're all starting having banter and that and saying, now ah, you've got a spark curse and just basically taking piss. Now when you're putting people down like that, Steffi, if you did that in a workplace, you'd get into trouble, wouldn't you? But I took it on chin, didn't I? Being the whipping boy. But when you were doing little things like that, and when I left that day, I got to know off somebody what you were saying about me, Steffi. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make my move and I'm going to hurt you in business. I'm not going to come round to your house and have it out with you in the street because I'm more than capable of doing that. But I don't, I wouldn't like anybody coming to my house. Anybody who comes to my house, they're in trouble. M massive trouble. And I won't come to your house if I've got beef. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And you were the cat that I skinned. I decided Steffi's biggest ticket seller is Josh Whale. And I'm going to sign Josh Whale. And I did that within one year. So in future, Steffi, when you're slagging people off behind the back constantly or you're embarrassing them in front of people, think before you do it. Because when you did that in front of Mick Whale, do you know what Mick Whale did? He never slagged me off. He said, I like it, Russ. You keep trying, kid. You keep trying, but that kid's tied up. I'll never forget he was a European kid. I said, hey, Mick, that's a good fight. Steffi, what do you think? And you you shown weakness storming off, Steffi, and then saying, do keep up. Try to pu You put me down and then start your dummy out and stormed off. Well, that was when I had you. Palm of my hand. I may act dumb, Steffi, but let me tell you this. I ain't no dumb ass. And like I said, your ass is mine, boy. But then again, you'd probably like that, wouldn't you? So walking around in a beef, uh, putting women's bras on. What's all that about? I'm putting it on Twitter. Are you crazy? But I respect you as a boxing person, Steffi. 
but not as a person. So show, show a little bit of respect in future because if you're going to do that to me, who you're working with, and then talk behind me back like that, what are you going to do when I'm not there? Are you like that with all people around you, Steffi? Well, anyway, getting back to what we were talking about here. Getting back to what we were talking about. Well, put a few box in there. I'll put a few snooker shots on first here while I just change battery. Hope you enjoy these shots. Hey, can you pop like this, Steffi? Right, remember what we said, Foggy, number 12. We got the shot, but the position is terrible, so we'll, we'll try it again. There you go. Come too far, Anna. Come too far, this is going to be an hard shot there. So basically, the system's been manipulated by Eddie Earn. He's got people employed to run social media accounts across the platform. I am told he employs a team of these people because it's cheaper than advertising. Yeah, I think I mentioned this. Uh, and who can blame him as he gets it? He, he does get it. Eddie Hearn gets it. He gets social media. As when we have two white collar fighters being given pro licenses and are told they Can headline. I am personally starting to ask myself, what am I involved in here? Then we have the YouTube people, yeah, we've, I've just been through all this, haven't I? YouTube people who put out proper gander for Matchroom and rubbish everything Frank Warren does. Now we know who puts the videos out, right, and bigs everything Matchroom up. We know that, don't we? We know that, don't we? Uh, we're not going to mention the names in there, but we know out of the YouTubers, the Porky followers, the Porky army, the movement, we all know, don't we? Because I can't do this channel without people interacting with me, right? Do you understand? I can't do it. When you leave a comment, that, that helps the channel. When you leave a channel, good or bad, it helps it because it encourages me. I do prefer to see nice comments, though, because... Anybody who would be, you'd be a liar, wouldn't you? Anybody would be a liar, wouldn't they, if they said they love all bad comments? Do you think I like waking up in the morning, seeing it say, Porky, you toothless nonce, you fat this, you, you nonce that, and you T-boy this, and you wash Dennis Hobson's car, that, yeah. I did it once, but I didn't wash it. I took it for a valet. It was an Audi Q7, brand new. We had 2,000 mile on clock and I had it for about a week I think while they were abroad. Had it parked outside house in Cunningsborough, Q7 plate, brand new black with it, full, fully loaded. I were walking 10 feet tall that week. <laughs> 70 grand's of font drive. But I'm not a tea boy but I'll make anybody a cup of tea, me. Anybody a cup of tea. No wrong with that, is the It's just show, being polite, isn't it? But, no, look, does anybody like waking up to see horrible comments and nasty comments and people saying they're going to do me in and all that? It's not nice, is it? But, you put your sin out there, you've got to take it on chin. I don't wish any bad on anybody, but if you're a boxer and you're going to chat shit, I'm going to pull you up on it. Simple as. If you're a boxer and you're saying I'm the best, I'm elite, and then you're fighting dossers, well, Tyson Fury is the Lanier heavyweight champion of the world. He's the best, so he says. He's got a massive profile, but fighting Tom Swartz, Otto Wallin, what's all that about? That's after Wilder. Alright? So, after getting dropped twice by Wilder, you're fighting dossers, going life and death with one of them. So, no. You've got to be pulled up on it. I'm sorry, you can't get away with it. If you was a footballer saying you're the best, but you only score goals in the FA Cup and the League Cup against Championship and Division 1 sides, but you're saying you're the best, you're the best and all this, you're the best striker. It's like uh, Luis Suarez, isn't it, saying I'm the best striker 
in Wales, but only scoring goals in FA Cup and League Cup for Liverpool, but he's saying he's the best. But he can't do it in Premier League or Champions League. Come on! So why should boxers get away with it? Footballers don't get away with it. They get hammered on them. Uh, they get hammered. Who were on about it the other day? AD. Is it AD? Terry Chapman Dharma and that boxing with AD. ADE. Good channel, that AD. Shout out AD. Uh, you don't get away with it if you're a footballer. So you shouldn't as a boxer. I'm sorry, but you can't get away with it. But. We've got people putting out propaganda for Matchroom all the time and putting anybody down. Trying to hammer my channel. There's people out there, YouTubers, and they know they are, that try to hammer my channel while loading it with their channel. But these people don't show the face. Now, and they make a living off their channel. They even sell merchandise off their channel, but they don't show the face. Oh my God, what is all that about? I did that for six months with K Official. They were fantastic quality. I made 150 quid and I get it to Josh Whale for his gym to help move forward. Now, that's the type of guy I am. Do these same people do that? These same people that hide behind cameras? I don't know. Good boxing people as well, but bias towards Eddie Hearn. And I'm not biased. I want to know about all these things that's going on in boxing. I want to know. I'm making my business to know. I want to know about Stubbub. Why they put it up. I want to know about these things. I want to know about the statistics that Dale Nichols, my good friend, at Dale the Great X on Twitter. Good friend of mine. Great friend. I want to know about why all these things are happening with Matchroom and why they're not putting world title fights on Sky and why they're charging us this and why they're making all these millions and why they're keeping fighters like Saunders apart and Andrade and Saunders and Callum Smith and Dillian White and Joshua you know why they kept Ortiz and Joshua Lewis Ortiz was signed to fight Joshua but they didn't put it on why not? I have a right to ask these questions as a boxing fan now This is how I look at it, right? These YouTubers, they put propaganda out for Matchroom and they rubbish everything that anybody else is saying. If it's rubbish, if I say anything about Matchroom, these people, they'll comment straight away. If I say anything detrimental about Tyson Fury, the Tyson Fury fans will comment straight away. They're going to defend their own, which is not wrong with that. But these same people will hammer Frank Warren, but then they'll say they'll not hammer Frank Warren. But then they'll kiss the arse of MTK. Because they're giving him a few free tickets. But yet, the same people hammer me, saying I beg for free tickets of Eddie Hearn. Do me a favour. Do me a favour, mate. Do me a favour. One, two free tickets I've had off Eddie Hearn. The others I bought. If they want to upgrade me, that's their business. So... I've been to two matchroom shows. Two matchroom shows since Frotch jacked in. Look, this is how it goes, right? It's boxing, isn't it? It's a business. It's a business. You know what I mean? But, like I said, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. I'm one of them people, me. If people criticise me, let's, let me meet you. People who email me, they send all these emails in and they make it out they're my friend. Are they really my friend? Are they a friend of the channel? Because when I ask them to speak to me on the telephone, well, not everybody wants to give you the number, do they? They're not, all, they're not like my good friend Terry Fox who sent me that book in. That's from the heart. Or the gentleman who dropped the beers off at the garage. He dropped some beers off. Uh, I forgot his name now, but because he's got a right odd email but that was nice him and his son came to my pal's garage where I used to put cars on his pitch I don't know but come down a boxing fan come and drop some beers off for me at Christmas isn't that nice that bottles of black sheep 
and another boxing fan who came to one of Dennis's shows as my guest, he sent me a crate of them. That were nice of him. I didn't share them with Dennis though. He don't like black sheep beer. But, uh, but no. My argument is this. Social media is fantastic if it's used in the right way. But like I said, we've got the dark side to it, haven't we? We've got these people that are sat in their house all day, probably with no job. So they're making videos all day, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? It's not good. But it's onwards and upwards. But if you're going to be critical, come to a show and say it to me face. That's all you've got to do. And I'll buy you a drink. Come and see me and I'll buy you a drink. Don't hide behind your keyboard or your camera. It's not good. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, but like I said, Frank Warren gets a lot of stick, doesn't he, on social media? Um, but he is boxing, isn't he? But you've got a certain couple of YouTube accounts with a decent following, chipping away constantly. And in the end, Billy Joe gave up, I think, with Frank Warren because these people who kept chipping away at, at Billy Joe Saunders. They're doing Eddie Hearn's job for him. Now, we know what I'm on about, don't we? Certain people kept chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And eventually a fighter has enough. Now, it happened with Ricky Burns. It happened with Cleverly. It happened with Tony Bellew. And it happened with Billy Joe Saunders. These YouTubers and these people, the same YouTubers, the same group of people, they kept chipping away. And eventually Billy, in the end, he left, didn't he? And he was a staunch Frank Warren man. Staunch. But eventually, he left, didn't he? He went. He went to Eddie. He followed the rest of them, didn't he? Now, he's followed the rest of them, but Eddie Hearn... Let me tell you this. He was slagging Frank Warren for putting Billy Joe Saunders in crap fights. And then look what he's just going to put him in. <laughs> eh? Our kettle call it fry, frying pan. That's what my mother would say. So, this is what it is, isn't it? But the same YouTubers who were slagging Billy Joe Saunders and slagging Frank Warren, if Billy said anything back, they'd report him, wouldn't they, to Twitter and get him in trouble. These same people who were slagging Billy's fights and slagging Billy have looked. They're now following him and bigging him up. Why is that? Well, they're bigging Billy up on his channel, aren't they? On the, on the channels, they're bigging Billy up. Because he's gone over to Machu now, he's crossed the street, so now it's okay, isn't it? Whatever's happened in the past is okay, but uh 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 don't wait with me that don't wait with me that. I watch everything and I see everything from afar. I always remember that. Now but is Billy Joe Saunders that good? Was Golovkin that good? Or are they just practicing their art on guys they are expected to beat? What do you think to that? Billy Joe Saunders, how many fights have you seen him in where you said, you know what, he'll get beat here? I think there's only one I can say that, and that's the little meal fight, because I didn't think he were bothered about boxing then. I didn't think, I, I knew he had the skills to beat Lemieux, but I just thought, he might get beat here away from home. And he's not been taking it seriously, and then Billy Joe Saunders pulls out a performance like that. A bit like Tyson Fury against Wilder, I said he'd get beat. And he didn't, did he? It was a draw, but he should have nicked it, be around, shouldn't he? But close fight, but. You couldn't make a case for Wilder winning, but Tyson upped his game, didn't he? And is that what Billy and Tyson need? They need the challenges where they, they know they've got to be on the ball. So. Or are they just practicing their art like Triple G and Billy Joe? I don't know, but are we expected to believe Triple G is an all-time great because he beat Kell Brook? Or Saunders is an all-time great? 
or at least an elite fighter because he beat David Lemieux. Beating David Lemieux and Andy Lee as your only sole world title wins or throw Eubank in if you want to throw Eubank in. Does beating them free mean that you are elite? Does it? Does it? I don't know. Well, George Groves beat Eubank and he beat De Gale, but is Groves elite? You won't put Groves as elite, would you? I'm not buying it. Go look at Froch, Joe Calzaghe, Ami Khan and Ricky Atten and Naz, Lennox Lewis. Go look at them boys. 10, 10, 10, 8, 9 world champions beat respectively between them. And Lennox, 14. I mean 14, come on, 2, 4, 6, 14 had 9, 23 had 8, 31 had 30, 61 world champions beaten between them 6 guys, an average of 10 each, and then you've got Saunders, hey, he beat, what is it, 2, stroke 3, we Eubank, and then you've got Triple G's beat 5, and Callum Smith is he elite? He's beat free. I use that as a yardstick. So they're not there yet, are they? Saunders, there's time for Saunders to be elite. I don't think there's no more time for Golovkin though, but there is for Saunders. He's got time to be elite. And Callum Smith, they've plenty of time and they've got it all to do. Hey, they might end up beat they might end up getting the record for the most world champions beating the division, but I doubt it. Which brings me to everybody's favourite bodybuilder. I'm a bodybuilder and I build bodies. My name's Anthony. It's a fight. It's a fight. Femi, helmet of the month, Joshua. Everybody's favourite weightlifter. We have heard all the stories of Mr. Bean, a.k.a. Adam Smith the Spin Doctor, a.k.a. Bean, Runner Bean, Coulda Bean, Shoulda Bean, Never Bean, Baked Bean, Green Bean, Mr. Bean, Beanie Hat, Beans on Toast, Beanhead, living on Beanville Island, you Beanhead, Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson, Adam Smith. Just tell us where the bodies are, Adam, please. Telling us that AJ is better than R. Lee and Lennox. Oh my God. Oh my God. Audley Harrison would have given Joshua an hard fight. Southpaw with that long reach, if he'd have used his brains, he could have fought Joshua and beat him. Telling you, Audley Harrison. Or Fraudly Harrison. But I don't know, but it is what it is, isn't it? AJ is better than Ali. Oh my god, where are they coming from with that? And all the hype around him, then we see all the hype around Josh, then we see it all unravel like an onion in front of our eyeballs while in New York after telling us he only fights in UK for his fans UK is where it's at for you where it's at for you the fans first sign at the numbers not doing do it doing very good and Eddie Earns shifts him off to New York don't he do you know what I mean? Do you know why? Do you know why they went to New York? I'm going to tell you. The first shift in numbers because we've got software that can tell you all sorts. Well, I haven't. My business partner has. We've got software that can tell you all sorts. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Joshua, the numbers were down. Do you know when they started going down? When they got rid of Pulev and slipped Takam in. Then they started it with Povetkin, didn't they? 39 year old Povetkin. 39 year old. I mean, how many more, and, and well, how old's Tackham? Well, we're 36. I mean, how much longer can he get away with these sort of fights? You know, it's not good. So next up in Saudi Arabia, 
a place where they're blowing stuff up. They're blowing stuff up in, in Saudi Arabia. We've got Eddie Earn. That thing that got blown up, well, it, it, Eddie Earn said it was 2,000 miles away. So, it, you know, I've got a, a problem with numbers in my head, don't you? Probably because. I'm a bit backward, aren't I, or something? I don't know, but I've got a lot going on in my head. But let me tell you this, right? I'm going to tell you something now. Eddie Hearn said, Hearn, it was 2,000 miles away when he was questioned in the Daily Telegraph. But that thing that got blown up was actually, Eddie, 137 miles away because I read it in the newspaper. Well, Eddie Hearn said, oh, that's nothing, that. Like. It was 2,000 miles away. It's a long way from where the event is. He keeps using this word, doesn't he? Event. Oh, it's a long, it's a long way from where the event is, Porky. It's a long way away. It's an event. Oh, it's an event, is it, Eddie, now? Well, let me tell you this. 1,960 mile. That's nearly 2,000 mile, isn't it? Well, Doncaster to Moscow in Russia is 1,960 mile. Right? Now that's a long way, isn't it? So if a, if something got blown up in Rush in in Moscow and I'm in Doncaster and I look on news, I'd go, oh, that's okay. It's okay, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 that event, that event's in Leeds tonight. Oh, it's happening 2,000 miles away. Oh, that's okay, Eddie, nice one. Eddie didn't obviously do a geography, did he? So Eddie said it's 2,000 miles away, didn't he, right? Well, let me tell you this. It was 137 miles, Eddie. 137 miles away. So, 137 miles from Doncaster, well, it's 140 mile to Luton from where I live. 140.4 mile from Luton, right? 140 mile. If you go on 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 this, well, there's three. It can be one within four or five mile, depending on what route you go. But roughly Doncaster to Luton, 140 mile. So if a, if something got blown up. Down there in Luton, 140 miles from where I am now, and I'm living in Saudi, I'd be thinking, woof, God. But if I were in another country and I'd seen that, you'd just look at the map and you said, bloody hell, the blo there's things getting blown up over there, 140 miles away from where that event is. I would shit my pants and I'd say to Say, for instance, if I were going over there with Terry Chapman Dharma, Ozzy Smith and Rico and Smido and Dale uh, Nichols, all people that I'm close to in boxing, I'd say, do you know what, lads? No offence, but I'm going to give it a miss. And they'd all say, we agree because we've got families as well. Let me tell you this, because I don't know anybody that wants to go over there since that bomb got exploded. But Eddie Hearn, damage limitation. Oh, it's 2,000 miles away. No, it's 137 miles away, Eddie. And let me tell you, the biggest event in Saudi to happen in the last 25 years is going to be going off in Saudi. 137 miles from where something's just exploded. Now, if these people who want to do all these things in a crazy country like that, where there's political unrest, if all these people, right, want to go on about it, it's crazy. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going, Eddie. I've got a passport anyway. It's, it's uh, damaged. I'm not going to be going, Eddie. And I don't know people who want to go. And I think it's very dangerous. And I think your greed is one day going to get the better of you. Your greed is going to get the better of you. I mean, how, how greedy can you get? You're putting events on 137 miles away from where some, they've blown some up. You're putting all them people in danger. They can't even go out and have a beer there. The beheading people. What if you do something wrong out there? 
What if I go out there, Eddie, and, I, and I'm in a in a shop, and I want, and I decide that I'm going to nick some. What if I get my hand cut off? Do you know what I mean? Like I said, 160, 960 mile Doncaster to Moscow. If it's happening 960 mile away, Eddie, it's not a problem. But 137 mile away, and don't forget, all the world's eyes are going to be on that event. And you know, Eddie, what these nut jobs are like. They're going to, so I'm going to swerve it. I'm not telling everybody not to buy a ticket, because if you like boxing, go to it. But if you are a boxing fan and you feel that you don't want to take a risk, well, don't go. So... But will, but will these YouTube channels, these other YouTube channels, I'm not going to mention who these YouTube channels are. I think we all know who the, who the YouTube channels are that big everything up match them, don't we? I think I've mentioned them enough. I can't bring myself to mention them now because they're blocked on my Twitter. But let me tell you this. They're good boxing people, though, but... Will these YouTube channels, on their YouTube channels, mention that it's 137 mile, Eddie, and that you are 1,863 mile out, which is probably, uh, should I say, probably, it's pr you're probably Luton, to Moscow, out. <laughs> That's how far you're out, Eddie. But like I said, all these people and Eddie Earns payroll, they're not gonna not gonna point that out, are they? But will the boxers, trainers, managers point out the lies point out the lies either on their Twitters? For example, I know Steffi Bull. I know him, he's a boxing promoter, he's a manager, he's a trainer. Uh, and he's an ex-boxer, and he puts his fighters on Sky. Will Steffi Bull put a tweet out, or Steve Goodwin, will they put tweets out saying that Eddie Hearn has lied and that it's, it's actually 137 mile away from this, was it an oil rig or something that's getting blown up by these fanatics, these nutcases? Will these people go on Twitter and point it out, or will these YouTube channel... Will they do it on the Facebooks or Instagram or Twitter? No. Will I? Fucking yes. Will Jeff Powell? Yes, he already has. I like Jeff. I like Jeff Powell a lot. I like him a lot. He backed me up with some, something years ago when I nominated somebody for an MBE. And I had a lot of running about to do with certain people in the boxing industry. He was one of them that stood behind me, along with Barry McGuigan and a few other people. So I like Jeff Powell. He's a nice guy. And uh, let's just say that Jeff Powell has not been getting treated very fairly by certain people at Matcham of late. I wonder why that is. But... Jeff Powell's one of my favourites, but people don't want to rock the boat, do they? They don't want to come out and say anything, do they? There's a little circle going on in boxing, and and, and, uh, and some skullduggery going on as well. But you need to be in the circle of trust, in the in-gang. It's like, for example, if you went to school with Adam Smith, he wouldn't be one of those people, would he, in the in-crowd, would he? I mean... Seeing Adam Smith on that program ringside back in the day, he always looked to me like one of the one of the the geeks that had, that had gate crashed the, the 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 science class. You know where all the cool kids hang out. You know all the kids who like me who who weren't bright enough to do biology, chemistry, and physics uh, at Edlington Comprehensive. So. I ended up doing science. It was just basically a load of delinquents sat in, sat in a classroom looking at us uh, watchers, hoping it was soon going to be quarter to four. Well, Adam Smith always strikes me as one of them people that have gate crashed the cool kids class, you know, like a woodwork class. He'd come into the woodwork class, you'd all look at him and say, Oi, geek, chemistry room's down there, wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Go play with your Bunsen burner. 
Do you know, do you know what I mean? Because if Adam Smith were in my class at school and when there were a Bunsen burner nearby, I can assure you that <laughs> there would have been people getting set on fire. I was just an horrible kid, wasn't I? But, uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? But that's boxing for you, isn't it? Or as Frank Bruno says, that's cricket, isn't it? But like I said, people don't want to rock the boat. People don't want to rock the boat. And there's skullduggery going on. People are buying subscribers to get sponsors as well. Did we know that? Oh, yes. You'd be surprised what I get to know. Oh, yes. Some of them even bragged to me about it. And said, well, you should do it. And I said, why? And I'm not going to name this guy, actually, because... And I'm sorry for bringing it up, but I won't name you. But this certain guy said to me, well, it's, I had to do it, didn't I, Pork? I says, why? So I had this guy on board and he wanted to know that I was doing alright. And I said, alright, well, it takes all shine off it, doesn't it, really? If you're going to do that. But like I said, it is what it is, isn't it? But there's a lot of people using bot accounts, isn't there? There's bot accounts galore. We know what that is, don't we? Where Eddie Hearn puts a... I had one that one out.